Greetings, poetry lovers. Today we're talking about Count Te Cullen, one of the finest poets of the Harlem Renaissance. Count Te Cullen was born May 30th, 1903, to a single mom in either Baltimore, New York, or Louisville, Kentucky. We are unsure. He died of high blood pressure and uremic poisoning at the tender age of 43, much too young. Of the Harlem Renaissance poets, he is the only one to actually grow up in Harlem. Cullen was adopted by the pastor of an influential Methodist Episcopal church and his wife, and grew up as a member of Harlem's elite. He went to DeWitt Clinton, an all-white high school in the Bronx, and did very well, graduating with honors in Latin, Greek, mathematics, and French. He also won several poetry prizes early on. Cullen received a bachelor's degree from New York University and went on to earn a master's in English from Harvard in 1926. Uh, quite an honor even today and very rare for an African-American in 1926. So Count A. Cullen was an accomplished individual. Along with Langston Hughes, Count A. Cullen was one of the leading poets of the Harlem Renaissance. And although it seems utterly ridiculous today, one of the first things that all of the poets, novelists, painters, sculptors, singers, and actors in the Harlem Renaissance had to do was to show that African American people were capable of producing art at all. Count A. Cullen chose to do this through writing sonnets, a form of poetry originating in Italy in the 1400s and popularized in English by William Shakespeare in the 1600s, 300 years before Cullen was even born. Basically, Count A. Cullen was showing the white establishment that he could not only work within their centuries-old established framework, but he could do an exemplary job. In my opinion, some of his work is better than Shakespeare's. So we're going to be looking at one of Cullen's famous and trickier sonnets. Uh, firstly, a brief departure. You can look all this up, but the easy way to tell a poem is a sonnet is that it has 14 lines in the last two rhyme. Sonnets are also written in iambic pentameter, uh, what Shakespeare wrote in, which is also called blank verse, not to be confused with free verse, and they have a tricky rhyme scheme, which we will not get into today. So here's the poem. Yet do I marvel. I doubt not God is good, well-meaning, kind. And did he stop to quibble, could tell why the little buried mole continues blind, why flesh that mirrors him must someday die, make plain the reason tortured Tantalus is Baited by the fickle fruit, declare if merely brute caprice doom Sisyphus to struggle up a never-ending stair. Inscrutable his ways are, and immune to catechism by a mind too strewn with petty cares to slightly understand what awful brain compels his awful hand. Yet do I marvel at this thing, to make a poet black and bid him sing. Now what I absolutely love about this poem is that if you think about it a little bit, all of the examples Cullen uses make perfect sense. Moles are blind because they live in the dark. We someday die because that's what defines us as human. Look up what Tantalus did and see if you don't think 
he should be endlessly tortured. And finally, using the logic of the poem, it is not a curious thing at all to make a poet black and bid him sing. But as completely natural as anything else in this world.